Hello, and welcome to the Apostolic Resource Center. My name is Lisa Great. I'm the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. And I am here this morning to share with you something the Lord has been speaking to me about, I would say, for almost a month now. But because I'd never heard about it, I wanted to make sure I understood clearly what God was saying about it. And also because this is not the type of conversation I would normally have. But I sense that this is something that needs to be addressed because there is a really good chance that many of you are experiencing the same spirit. I'm using the word spirit because it's a spirit we're going to deal with today that I have dealt with. And I personally have never heard this spirit talked about in the church or even with people that are really good at discerning of spirits and kind of sharing with us about spirits like Jensen Franklin. He taught us about the Python spirit. We've heard about Leviathan and Jezebel and, and we've heard about Ahab and Absalom and just these multiple spirits. We talk about the spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Elisha. And there is a spirit that the enemy has released. And the only way I can describe it to fully give you an understanding of what I think God is saying about it is that this spirit seeks to torment you. And, and, and we know that um, the enemy is a tormentor. He really loves to torture and torment people. And I don't even like to give him a whole lot of credit, but the challenge is this spirit has come up more than once for me, and the Lord has made it very clear what spirit it is. And so I wanted to release it to you as a part of our apostolic advancement so that you can understand that as you advance apostolically, you know exactly what you're running into and what you're dealing with. Because I think we're starting to deal with spirits that maybe haven't been common and maybe haven't been addressed or identified because we haven't really understood what they are. So here's the spirit the Lord has revealed to me. It's called the scorpion spirit. Now, if you know anything about the word of God, you know that the scorpion is identified in scripture. So in Revelation chapter nine, this is the very first verse God spoke to me to look at when he revealed to me that I have been bit by a scorpion spirit. Now, when I say I'd been bit by a scorpion spirit, what I mean is, is that somebody's words were venomous to me and, and it wasn't that they hurt me physically, but it caused a continual torment in my thinking. It caused me to think, have a faulty thought process, I guess is the best way to say it. It caused um, inflammation in my body, but I didn't know that that's what it was all about until after I studied the scorpion spirit. But the main effect of what I dealt with was tormenting thoughts, this consistent barrage and attack from the enemy. And I knew it wasn't God. I knew it was trying to hinder my progress. And I didn't quite understand it until the Lord began to speak to me and reveal to me what I am dealing with. So in Revelation chapter 9, this is what it says. It says, the appearance of the locust, in verse 7, Revelation 9, 7, because I like to give it to you in context. The appearance of the locust was like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses rushing to battle. They have tails. Here it is, Revelation 9, 11, or 9, 10. They have tails like scorpions and stings, and in their tail is the power to hurt men for five months. That's a New American Standard Version. In other versions, it says, in their tails is the power to torment men for five months. They have a king over them. This is how we know that this spirit is not of God, but of the enemy. They have a king over them, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. So Abaddon um, and Apollyon mean death and destruction. They, they're out to destroy. They're out to... They're out to attack and to paralyze and to torment unto destruction. And so they're trying to destroy that which God is building in your thought processes. They're trying to destroy and they're trying to torment the way you think. They're trying to torment your thoughts so that you cannot advance the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And here's what it says in, 
in verse five that I forgot to read. Um, they were, I forgot to read to you. It says they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. So verse five and verse 10 and 11 are kind of your key verses about the scorpion and about the torment. But the reality is this scorpion spirit is actually a New Testament spirit. They call it the scorpion. In the Old Testament, they call it the locust. Now, here's what the locust did. You remember in Joel chapter two, that the locust came and they devoured the land. But in, in Exodus, one of the plagues was a plague of locusts. And what they were, were they were devourers. And so the Lord used locusts to devour the land as a plague against the Egyptians in order to get Israel out of their captivity. But this scorpion spirit is an absolute demonic spirit that is seeking to torment the way we think and trying to torment us in our thought processes as we advance the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so this scorpion spirit is a tormentor and it's a spirit. It's not a person. It's a spirit. But here's what I learned when I did a little bit of study about the scorpion spirit. Um, one of the things that I found, and this is just me going on the internet and going under Wikipedia and looking up the attributes of a scorpion. Um, the scorpion is, is the, the, the parallel animals or the synonymous animals with the scorpion is the snake. And so again, it brings us back to the ancient serpent, the enemy, the devil. So we know that he is the king over this spirit, but it's also um, found, it says it's found in hot countries. So for you that are on fire, that's where that scorpion spirit is going to be found. When your body is in, 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 is set on fire, that's where that scorpion spirit is going to come and try to destroy what God is building because you have been set ablaze by the power of God. But it, it also lurks in decayed buildings. Now, this is where we have to be very careful because the Greek word for scorpion is scorpios. And it's believed to have lived um, on the bottom of the sea. And so here's the deal. The scorpion spirit lurks in decayed buildings. Well, the reality is, is that we are the temple of God. But many people that haven't been transformed in the way they think, they haven't been renewed in their mind. There's a spirit of decay because when you don't let the word of God, when you don't renew your mind by the reading of the word of God, when this does not become your source of life in the words that you listen to, there's a decay that takes place in your body and, and, and that decay in the building that God is trying to build, that scorpion will work through other people that we trust that are believers. It's not, they are not the scorpion spirit, but the scorpion spirit will work through the decay that has yet to be healed in their lives. And that scorpion spirit will work through them to come and sting you with their words. And, and, I have found personally, this is just me personally, I have found people that I trust the most unintentionally release that scorpion spirit upon me because I let my guard down with the people I trust the most. People that are trusted, respected people in my life that I let speak into my life that have a proven track record. If I'm not discerning, the enemy will use something in their life to release that scorpion spirit to sting me. Now, here's, here's what I mean. The one thing that I love with Bill Johnson, Sean Bolts, others that have kind of propagated the goodness of God message, Johnny Enlow, these that have really taught us that the words that come out of our mouth are life and death, Joyce Meyer, they've taught us that the words that come out of our mouth are life and death and therefore speak life. They've really taught us, and many people are, they struggle with the message, but they have taught us that we need to be speaking life, that prophecy is to edify, that we need to be speaking life over one another, that we need to be speaking um, truth over one another, but we need to be pulling the gold out of each other. And what I've come to realize is, is that we speak what we believe. We speak what we hear. And, and many times I have found that people hear themselves more than they hear God. They hear their history of brokenness and they claim it to be the Holy Spirit. And so in doing that, it's not malicious or intentional, but in doing that, 
they release that spirit of the scorpion. They'll say something to you or say something to me. And, and they're not maliciously trying to torment us or harm us, but they'll say something that is negative to us and it torments us because we trust them, we respect them, and we appreciate their opinion. And we believe they hear from God. And so when, especially, here's where it really gets hard, when they say the Holy Spirit said to me, and then they speak something over you, and, and a lot of times it will agree with something God has spoken to you, but when God speaks a correction to you or speaks a direction to you, he's always speaking us up. He's, his words never torment us. They always build us. They always edify us. His, even his correction edifies us. But when that scorpion spirit comes and somebody says it's from the Holy Spirit and we receive it as a word from God, then, that, then we receive the venom of that scorpion spirit and its tail stings us and torments us for days on end. So I hope this is making sense to you. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of insight into this new spirit. We're going to have to talk about it a little bit more. But I want to close by sharing this with you because even Jesus identified uh, this spirit in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus talked about this exact spirit and he said, um, this is when the 70 were sent out and they had just returned. And this is what they said in verse Luke 10, 17, the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, here's the verse 10, 19. I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. So I want to leave you with the, that word of encouragement that this scorpion spirit is alive and well. It's seeking to torment. It's seeking to destroy. It's seeking to eat away and, and paralyze us and cause inflammation in us so that so that we get... um. We struggle and we battle and we wonder what the struggle is. Well, it's really a good chance you've been bit by a scorpion spirit. But Jesus says right here that he's given you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And so all we need to do is trample upon that scorpion spirit with the word of God in prayer. Once you identify it as a scorpion spirit, you do not trample on the person, but you trample on that spirit. You do not cast away that person, but you cast away that spirit. And in doing so, you will find that the Lord will, will detox your body of the venom of that spirit. You'll think clearly again. You'll begin to identify what the spirit of God is saying again. And you will find yourself again on the road to apostolic advancement. And you will continue to press in and you will continue to move forward. But no, if it's attacked you once, it's going to continue to seek to attack you. It's not the person, it's the spirit. So make sure that you deal with the right spirit, not with that person, because they may not even recognize they're releasing a scorpion spirit. They may believe it's the Holy Spirit. So you have to discern the spirit behind it. And when you do, you do an Ephesians 6.10 or a 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 5 on it. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against these spirits. And we've been given authority over them. So may the Lord bless you today. May you continue to overcome. These are things that the Lord is teaching us on how to be overcomers. And I decree and declare today that you will be able to identify the scorpion spirit and deal with it as a matter of a spiritual issue, not something personal against the person that may have um, been used to release that venom into you. Break that off of you. Take the blood of Jesus and let it flush that de demonic venomous spirit off of you. And may the Lord continue to increase you, build you, and edify you as you advance the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is Lisa Great with the Apostolic Resource Center. If you want to give into our ministry so that we can continue to advance the gospel of the kingdom in our generation, you can go to www dot apostolic resource center dot org that's www dot apostolic resource center dot org you can see kind of what we're doing and what god has called us to and also you can click the donate button and give you can become a monthly giver or a one-time giver and we thank you so much for supporting us and for everything that god is doing in your life we rejoice 
We are on the same team and we are advancing the kingdom of God together. May the Lord bless you. Have a great day.